Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the Singularity Computers water cooling guide. At the end of part one, I just finished the loop and I've now set the system up for the filling of the loop. So I'm now going to talk about the precautions you need to take against leaks. First of all, the best thing you can possibly do is of course prevent leaks altogether and ways you can do this is use high quality components to construct your loop. Also, before you even start, you need to inspect all of your components. I check things such as if I'm using a tube reservoir, I'll tighten the top and bottom of the res. Then as you're building your loop, take your time. It's all about quality. The critical parts are the connections because if you're going to get leaks, that's where they'll be. So tightening fittings, connecting tubing, things like that. Double check everything. And then also once you finish your loop, Go around, inspect the loop under a bright light, make sure that you haven't overlooked anything and that you've done everything properly. If you do these things, leaks are going to be highly unlikely, but if you prepare for leaks, then they're not really going to matter so much. So as you can see, I've laid paper towels around the build wherever a leak could possibly drip. I've also connected up my drainage system so that I can quickly drain the loop if there is a leak. I have towels on standby in case of a catastrophic leak, but most importantly, the only component that you should have power running to when you're filling your loop is your pump. And this is one of the ways you can achieve that. What I have here is two power supply jump starters, and these allow you to run your power supply without connecting it to your motherboard. So basically they do the same thing as the power button on your case. There's a couple of different ways of using these. You can use the power supply in your build, but it's inconvenient because you need to disconnect everything except for the pump. And also, if you get a catastrophic leak, it could still damage the power supply. So I like to use an external power supply. You can get your hands on a cheap one or use a spare and connect it all up outside the build, you know, with the power supply jump starter and just run a single Molex lead into your pump the best thing you can possibly do though is get something that is dedicated for the job. This is made by Phobia. It's a 90 watt power brick similar to what you see for a laptop and it just runs a single Molex connector. I actually have a Molex splitter connected up to it so that I can fill loops with you know, multiple pumps. But this is really convenient because it's small, it hardly takes up any desk sp space. The only problem with it was that it didn't have a switch so I've modded one into it the reason it's better to have a switch is because most pumps can't run dry and as you're filling your loop your reservoir will empty out quite quickly you need to be able to switch the pump off before it runs dry you can just plug and unplug the pump but it's fairly slow and inconvenient it's a lot easier with a switch you probably saw that one of the jump starters I had has a switch on it so I'd, I recommend that one if you go down that path but there is other ways of incorporating a switch. You can use the switch on the back of your power supply. You can use a power board or the switch on the wall, something like that. Now, as I mentioned, the coolant I'm using today is Mayhem's X1 UV Blue, and it's a 250 mil concentrate that makes two liters. So I need to mix that up first. This should be more than enough for this loop. I think this loop will only take about a liter. Now I'm going to talk more about coolant in my upcoming guide on choosing components for your water cooling system but for now I'll just say that as a beginner you should really just be using a pre-mixed coolant which is what this is but this is actually a concentrate so I need to mix distilled or deionized water with it. Okay I have it mixed up so Mayhem's X1 UV Blue is what the client selected for this build it's actually what I'm currently running in my own personal primary system, Singularity Beast 2. Different ways of filling the loop. I always use a syringe. I find it's the easiest, most convenient way. It can sometimes be a bit slower, but the one thing that you have is an extreme amount of control with a syringe. So I do suggest this for a beginner. A lot of other ways they don't give you as much control which means you end up having leaks, spills. So syringes are, are very easy to use. So I have my container over here, I'm going to bring it as close as possible so that I don't get any drips along the way. Now I'm just putting it straight in the, in the top. I do have a funnel here with a quarter inch thread on it. 
So depending on what you're using to fill, things like this can make it easier. It's really up to you. People come up with all different ways of filling their loops. Okay, here we go. I'm going to flick the switch for the first time. Make sure you put your finger or something over the top of the res because it can splash out the top. So you can see I had to quickly turn on I had to turn on the pump and then fairly quickly turn it off again. That's why you need to have well, it's much more convenient to have a switch. So we have full circulation, which means the coolant has made it all the way around the loop and back to the pump. So this is at the point where you can actually leave the system running. But because the res is almost empty, it could continue sucking a little bit of air, which just throws a whole heap of air into the loop. So I'm not going to leave it running at this point. I will fill up the res again. Okay, here we go again. So this will be it. I might need to top up the res a little bit more after this. Probably not much though. So this is the point where you need, really need to be watching out for leaks. You need to be looking at, you know, all the way around the loop, at every component, because this is the point where leaks start and they can rapidly accelerate. So that's it. It's now time for the leak testing. And for my client builds, I actually leak test for eight hours, but that's because I have a strict testing and validation process. 30 minutes to an hour is definitely enough. And not only is that time to keep an eye on the system, to check for leaks, it's time for the air to come out of the loop. First of all, it will be big bubbles and then micro bubbles. And seriously, the micro bubbles or lemonade can take up to a day or even two to come out of the loop, depending on your loop. Now, you don't need to worry about air in your loop. It will, all, most of it will come out eventually and it hardly affects, affects performance at all. The difference is minimal. So you can use your system normally, although I wouldn't be going for overclocking records until the air is out of the loop. Now, the other thing is, you only really need to worry about leaks for the first five minutes or so, because if the system is going to leak, it's probably going to leak immediately, as soon as the coolant starts flowing around the loop. So that's it. Once I've completed the leak testing in about an hour's time, I will remove all of the precautions, including the paper towels, and then I'll connect the pump back to the power supply in the build and boot the system. So here it is, the finished product. It passed the leak testing without any problems. I'm now going to cover the benefits of water cooling. So first of all, I think this one goes without saying, the massive improvement in aesthetics. I'm going to give you the opportunity to take a good look around the system while I'm covering the temperature, noise output and performance results. So first of all, the temperature results. I'm not going to go into detailed temperature results. I'm just going to cover the results that's going to show the biggest gap, so the load results. So for this test, I run Prime95 small FFTs for one hour, so I put the system under 100% load. And for the CPU at stock clocks, the difference between air cooling and water cooling was 36 degrees Celsius, which is just incredible. For the graphics card at stock clocks, the difference between air cooling and water cooling was 16 degrees Celsius. Now the difference between air cooling and water cooling at stock clocks is big enough, but when you really start to see the headroom of water cooling is when you overclock. Unfortunately, I didn't get any overclock results on air cooling because the Intel stock cooler actually failed after two minutes of testing. I'll talk more about this shortly. Now for the noise output results, starting with the air cooled results. So the result was approximately 51.5 decibels at 300 millimeters from the case. Now, when the system was water cooled, I couldn't get an accurate result with my decibel meter, mainly because it doesn't go below 30 decibels, unfortunately. But to give you an idea, the system was 
pretty much inaudible over background noise. All of the fans that I used were below 20 decibels. The air penetrator is actually higher than 20 decibels on high, but I'm using it on low. The pump is supposed to be more than 20 decibels, but I, I can't hear it over the fans. The power supply fan is off most of the time, but under heavy load, I could actually start to hear the power supply fan over the rest of the fans in the build. So probably somewhere around 25 decibels. Now for the performance results. As I mentioned, I couldn't overclock the CPU at all with the Intel stock cooler on it because the CPU actually went over 90 degrees Celsius after two minutes of Prime 95 small FFT. And this didn't surprise me because the Intel stock cooler often fails my load testing due to the hot climate where I live. You have to remember that the ambient temperature directly affects the temperatures of the components. And most of the time, the ambient temperature where I live is up over 30 degrees Celsius. It's a lot hotter than the ambient temperatures of most of the other people around the world doing this kind of testing. So it just goes to show what my water cooling systems are up against. So basically what I'm comparing here is the performance results at stock clocks, which is all I could get on air cooling. I mean, I could have got a bit of an overclock out of the graphics card, but the performance boost out of that is minimal to the overclock that I managed to get on water cooling, which was just a 60 second overclock that I quickly punched in with minimal testing. So here we go, I'm going to show you the performance results in screenshots. Okay, I also have some results for Battlefield 3 and Metro 2033. So for Battlefield 3 at stock clocks, the average frame rate was 130.7. Overclocked, it was only 138, so not much difference there. For Metro 2033, the average frame rate at stock clocks was 27.5, and at the overclock, 36.3, so a bit more of a difference there. So that's it, that's all of my results, and right now you're looking at the finished system with the side panels on and all up and running. I just wanted to mention that this build is not actually entirely finished. I'm going to be adding some UV lighting. The client lives locally, so this is a build you'll be seeing again in future videos. UV lighting is going to look amazing in this build because the tubing and coolant is UV reactive, and it will give a glow-in-the-dark effect. Okay, that concludes this water cooling guide. As I've mentioned, I'm going to do another guide coming up on choosing components for your water cooling system. And I'm going to go into detail on how to choose components, which components to choose based on your specifications, all of that. I know it's an important topic because I get so many questions about it. And there's some people that get stuck on choosing components and I think Actually, for some people, choosing components is even harder than building the water cooling system itself. So it's definitely important that I cover it. I hope you enjoyed this guide. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and favorite if you want to see more.